Hello everyone, it's Benny here, and in this video we're going to be introducing OpenGL. And before we get into this video, I would like to bring up that we're not actually going to be doing any coding in this video. And the reason for that is OpenGL is a little bit of an... It's not exactly an intuitive system that it uses, so I think it's a little bit important to understand some of the systems that go into making OpenGL work, and I'm hoping that that will make it a little bit easier to understand when we start doing some really, really weird OpenGL type of mathematics to create some big fancy graphics. So that, that's my hope, and that's why we are just going to be talking about basically how OpenGL works in this video. So let's start very basic. What on earth is OpenGL? Well, OpenGL is, stands for Open Graphics Library, and OpenGL is strictly a rendering API. That means the only purpose for OpenGL is its the whole reason it exists is just to take images and draw them to your screen. That's it. So, now that you hopefully understand what OpenGL is doing, let's talk about that for a bit. Because, as I mentioned earlier, OpenGL does this drawing image to a screen in a really... It's not the way you'd think of it first. Because if you think of it first, you probably think, oh yeah, I'm just going to have, like, a pixel here. I'm going to do some drawing. I'll do this pixel, this pixel. I'll just figure out what's at each of these pixels. I'll just do pixel by pixel. As it turns out, if you try doing graphics like this, it's over... If it are at 800 by 600 resolution, that would be 480,000 operations multiplied by the number of things you need to do to figure out what's at that pic at each pixel. So you need to do 20 things to get to each pixel. That's 9.6 million operations per frame. And yeah, today's hardware can't handle that. So we're just going to forget the whole idea of doing things pixel by pixel. And we're going to talk about the way OpenGL does it, because it's a very clever way. Now, the, the way OpenGL does it is it takes advantage of the fact, it takes advantage of sort of a mathematical thing. If you've taken math, and please excuse my really poor mouse drawing, but, oh god, yeah, this is going to be really bad drawing, but, oh well. If you remember in math, there's these things called matrices. And you know, they might have something like, I don't know, I'm just making this up, it's almost the identity matrix. And yeah, enjoy my amazing matrix graphics. And yeah, I'm not good at bounce drawing. But, but anyways, remember this, the matrix. Now there's a very special quality to the matrix. It allows you to, ooh, if you're doing matrix, any operation with matrix, it does, uh, it gives you a whole bunch of numbers out of it with a very simple addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So if you're doing basic math with matrices, you're able to essentially get a lot more information than you would if you're doing it individually. So OpenGL sort of takes advantage of that fact. And... Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna get race it this way. There we go. So, oh, OpenGL does everything Oh, almost everything, but pretty much everything, using matrices. And that's just because mat matrices are a lot faster way of doing things, because they, when you do math with matrices, you get a lot more information out of it than you do in um, normal operations. Like, if, even if you have a 4x4 four four matrix, that's a total of 16 operations, essentially, for one operation. Now, obviously, it doesn't work exactly like that, because it takes a little bit more processing to do matrix math that uh, was just basic math but you still end up getting it still ends up being faster in the end and that's the important thing here so that's the important that's really one of the most important things you should get out of this video is that everything's done with matrices so in the next video when we start actually using this stuff and you start seeing me doing some really weird freaky matrix stuff don't freak out it's just the way OpenGL handles it so now that we have um, now that we're talking about how everything's done with matrices, let's talk about a little bit of how OpenGL handles these. 
And before some OpenGL expert comes and gets in my face and starts yelling at me about how this is not the right way of how things are done, I'd just like to point out that I'm not talking about the rendering pipeline. That's something completely different, because I know if I don't mention this, there's going to be someone who comes in and just starts yelling about how I know nothing because this is not how the rendering pipeline works and yada yada yada. No, I'm not talking about the rendering pipeline. This is something different. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the two types, or the three types of matrices that OpenGL does most of its math with. So it has three types of matrices. Well, it has three matrices that it does math with. It has the model view matrix with my actually not half bad mouse in, a projection matrix, and, and, and a texture matrix. And I really should say they're, these are more of groups of matrices because you can have more than one matrix in these groups. So there's a model, projection, and texture matrix. I've just abbreviated it because I. I don't think it's going to work out too well if I try writing all these out with a mouse. So, yeah. But, and these are sort of multiplied together, and that ultimately gets you a shape. And that's the other important thing of OpenGL. It does not render an entire image, because, as we said before, trying to do a whole thing, whole bunch of things just don't work out. It just draws a shape. And if you think about this artistically, that actually makes a little bit more sense. Because if you're trying to paint a picture, you're not thinking of, of okay, at this point in the canvas, I'll need this much red. At this point in the canvas, I'll need this much green. Or No, you're thinking of, okay, I have this sh shape or image I'm trying to make. And I'll just I'll draw some shapes and create an image from that. So, that's the way OpenGL does things. It just draws things based on shapes, and this allows things to be a lot faster because if there's nothing to be drawn, then OpenGL can just leave that space blank. So, and this style of drawing is something known as rasterization. So if you ever wondered what people were talking about when they said the term rasterization, hey, now you know, it's drawing things based on shapes. So that's a little bit of a sidetrack. So this gets a rasterized image, and I don't really know what to draw here, so I'm just going to draw a happy face. Because you can't go wrong with a happy face, even a really derpy looking one. But, <laughs> yeah. So now let's talk more about the E's three matrices. And how OpenGL has managed to, to assemble a shape based on these three groups of matrices. First you have the model matrix, or more specifically, the model view matrix. In this matrix mode, what an OpenGL will do is it will do two things. It will find out the uh, position, the rotation, and the scale of what you're making, and it will also figure out the shape. So, if you're trying to draw, so this is more or less the um, where the actual shape is created. So, if I want to draw a square, this is where OpenGL creates a square. Then it and it figures out where on the screen it wants to put it, so it might say, I don't know, wants to put the square here, X marks the spot, not weird arrow, but anyways. So yeah, so you'd create a shape in here, you'd move it around in here, you'd rotate it in here. So, needless to say, this is where a lot of your things will happen. Yeah, so, that's your first thing. Now the next thing is the projection matrix. In this matrix, what you're doing is you're adjusting the shape so that, for lack of a better term, so it looks right. So, like, if I have this big 3D cube, for example, I mean, you're going to expect it to look a little bit, um, you're going to expect it to look like your eye would see it. You're not going to expect it to be a 3D cube like... Oh god, I can't believe I'm actually trying to draw a 3D cube like this, but, um, yeah. Yeah, okay, use your imagination for, like, a wireframe cube. <laughs> this is not working out very well. Maybe for the next video I'll try improving my artistry skills with mice. And, yeah, so, <laughs> if you have a cube that looks like this, and, god forbid, your cube actually does look like this, but... <laughs> I mean, it would, wouldn't really look right if the cube came out looking like this. 
for more reasons than one. But, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm back. I just stopped and I thought about a good way to explain the projection matrix because I honestly did not have a good way to explain it though. So here's what I came up with. Let's say I have a door that I'm drawing in OpenGL. Take it into the model view matrix, make a square, make a circle, boom, I have a door. Now let's say I want to place a door in a hallway like this one. If I just drew the do door exactly like this, then, well, that, that simply does not look right. Doors don't look like that when they're in hallways. They look more like this. So, what the, a projection matrix can do is it can, for example, it can adjust a door to look like this in the view. So, so, you know, it's like the way your eye expects it. Your eye doesn't expect a door to look like this. It expects it to look more like this. And it allows you more options. If you want to draw a door like this, then you're certainly welcome to. That's one option of projection, and that's the literal shape of the door. But if you want to make it look the way your eye looks, you can draw it like this. And there's more ways you can project the image, but these are the two most common ways. You, you either want to project it exactly like it literally is, or you want to project it in the way that your eye sees it. So that's my explanation of the projection matrix, and I hope that makes a little bit of sense to you. If not, it's not the biggest deal in the world, but I mean, hopefully you at least understand the projection matrix now. So there we go. We've got the model view matrix, which lets us draw something like a door, the projection matrix, which lets us put it in, in a place it likes to draw it in the way we'd like it to draw it, I guess. Again, it's it's tricky to explain, but... Now lastly, we have the texture matrix. Now, I'm assuming you know what a texture is. If I have a door like this, I might have a wood texture, which looks... I, I don't know, it looks like this. You know, there's wood planks, there's maybe some nails, I don't know. I'm not actually going to keep trying to draw a texture with my house, at least without some serious time in practice, but yeah, I'd want to, if I want to put the wood texture on the door, well first off, this the texture matrix is a little bit deceptive in its name because deciding where the texture is drawn onto the door is actually done in the model view matrix. You specify tech texture coordinates. Basically you'll take this point, this point, this point, and this point, and you'll tell OpenGL where those exist on the door. So for example, I'd say that those points exist here, 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 and here. And then OpenGL would say OK and draw the texture based on the points I give it to. So that's the way texture mapping in OpenGL works. But what the texture matrix allows you to do is, for example, if I want to, to take that a step further and rotate the texture a bit, I could do that in the texture matrix. Or if, for example, I wanted to make the texture, you know, slide across the door like, I don't know, have a door conveyor belt for some reason, that would also be done in the texture matrix. So it allows you to move and adjust the texture that's already drawn onto the object. And that's the point of the texture matrix. And you won't be using this one nearly as much as you'll be using the projection matrix, the model view matrix, but you know, it's still an important matrix when you come to use it. So, those are the three types of matrices, and although you will, for the most part, just be working with one matrix of each of these, we will, from time to time, be adding extra matrices onto this. So, just letting you know that these can be more than one matrix, but usually we're just dealing with one. And one last, actually, very important thing. All this matrix math, we don't have to do it. OpenGL does it for us. We just say, hey OpenGL, um, do the matrix math to find, to draw a point here. And OpenGL is like, okay, now do the matrix math to draw a point, the line between this point and this point. So OpenGL is like, okay, now do the matrix math to make a shape like this. OpenGL is like, alright. And so, it does all the fancy math for us. 
we just have to tell OpenGL to do it. But it's still important to know that OpenGL does things like this because we are going to have to deal with some of the artifacts of having to do everything with matrix math. So with that, that should be pretty much everything we're going to do in this video. So, thank you. I hope you understood that, especially the projection matrix, because I know it's a little bit confusing. So thank you, and I will see you in the next video.